Okay, let's get started. So welcome to the Whakapapa of Stuff. You've already heard from one of our presenters, Kahurangi from Parakore. In this session, Kahurangi will trace the lineage of materials. So please do pop your questions and comments into the chat. We'll come to it as, um, as many as possible at the end of the presentation. Fingers crossed we've got some time. So Kahurangi, over to you. Kia ora. Kia ora everyone. Um, I'm so lucky that I get to do a little bit of an expansion of what I was talking about earlier. Um, I was like <laughs> trying to get through all my slides so quickly. So thank you for um, being here. But the main point I wanted to get across um, in the first korero was about whakapapa and that it's a really simple way um, of being more conscious and um, building our connection with the whenua, with the land and with the people around us. Uh, so uh, the whakapapa o Ngarawa is about the whakapapa of all the stuff we use. So um, isn't that photo so cute? There we go. Let's see if I can move on to the next slide here. Come on, mate. Here we go. Okay. So if I look around my bedroom here, I can see that everything in this room, mostly everything, we're not going to talk about textiles or tech stuff today, but mostly everything is made from five natural resources. So if I look at my walls, um, they've got wood in them, my windows are made from um, glass. So let's have a look at our everyday stuff. It's going to move your beautiful faces. So the products we use. So we have steel or maitai. We have aluminium, kōnu mohe. Of course, glass, kararehe. Uh, karahe, sorry. Plastic, kiriho. And pepper or paper. And then, of course, cardboard that goes along with that. So we look at all of this stuff around us. So here we go. Here's my drink bottle is a great um, example. So I've got glass. I've got my, um, my wood. So this is one of the things that I use every day. Oh, my glasses. So all of our stuff when we look around are made from these five everyday materials. So our everyday materials obviously come from natural resources. So I want to think about the whakapapa of my drink bottle. What is the whakapapa of my drink bottle? Okay, well, let's see if I can, oh uh, yeah, there we go. So we have, um, of course, the whakapapa of pepper and cardboard and wood, uh, our rako, our trees, uh, the whakapapa of our steel, our mai tai is our black iron sand or iron ore mines as well. We have the whakapapa of our karahe, which is our white silica sand or nepu takuai. Hino. Now, um, of course, plastic, um, anything that's going to be a little bit waterproof is comes from plastic. Um, so that comes from our natural resource of oil. And then um, kōnu mohe, our aluminium, comes from that um, wonderful red rock that's um, mostly from Australia. If we think of that red earth over in Australia, that comes from bauxite. And um, I guess something to take away from this is thinking about where our stuff comes from really makes us switch our thinking in um, that this is a gift, a taonga from Papa Tuanuku, our earth mother. So all the stuff we use is a taonga. It has been gifted to us. So um, when I think about, you know, the aluminium can that I um, drink from, that aluminium is made from a gift of bauxite and that bauxite has traveled um, long, long distances to then um, be broken down. And then of course, places like uh, Reno Tinto um, and those kinds of places that make our aluminium have to use up so much electricity and they have to um, create so much waste product for me to have this aluminium can that I will drink out of and yes put it in the recycling hopefully it goes into recycling 
Um, and then it goes through that process again, right? And that is that is traditionally called a circular system. But I guess what we're, we're, we're really doing when we think about the papa of our stuff is we are thinking about, yes, where it comes from, but also where it has traveled, what it has done to get to where it is now to be in our, um, for us to be able to use it as a taonga. So really um, switching our thinking about that. So what have we got here? So, um, of course, we've got our um, natural resource of Rako. And so um, that's pepper and kari maro, of course. We've got our black iron ore sand. So our resource makes the material of mai tai, our steel. So if we think of the difference between steel and aluminium as well, steel is what's really strong and hard and um, like the the our cars and our trucks and things like that are made up and then the aluminium is a little bit more uh, lighter so um, I think the next one's oh no not aluminium we've got white silica sand here so um, a gift from Henny Kitty Kitty um, she's the atua of the um, the space between um, the land and the sea of the sand and so she gives us our um, karahi Oil Hino um, from deep within the realms of Rua Moko um, give us our plastic, our kitty ho. So today I was um, walking along the beautiful Avon and unfortunately every day I'm picking it, like come home with just packets of plastic, like soft plastics in my in my pockets to throw away and I was thinking, oh, what is the papa of this? Thinking about this cordage, like, what is the papa of this? And so I turned it over and I'm looking at the back of the packet and I can see where the packet, had, like where that chip packet um, company maybe packaged those chips into that plastic. But it doesn't tell me where the oil came from to make the plastic that is now being used um, and then just discarded by the river, which is going to go into the ocean. And it's, you know, it just expands. But this is what I'm saying. If we can just take away one simple thing, which is to think about the papa of our stuff, it expands our minds and it deepens our connection and our empathy for where our stuff comes from. Because plastic is actually a taonga, right? It comes from the natural world. So if we've got it, let's use it and um, reuse it. Um, we've got bauxite here, toka konu mohe, like I said, from the um, lovely Australia over there. And that gives us our aluminium products. So aluminium and steel, I've just talked a little bit how about how they're different. Um, a really easy test of that is obviously steel is magnetic and aluminium is not. Go around with your magnet. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about renewable resources and non-renewable. So the word renewable is re, so something happening again, um, re, new, I think that's the next slide, new, not old, it's new, to make something new, able, can. So what we're doing is we're saying renewable, it's making something again. We can make it again, so renewable. Renewable, renewable. So when we look at our five main natural resources that make the materials that we use in our everyday life, which ones, which of those are renewable? Of course, we've all been out there planting trees, or hopefully we have. <laughs> uh, so trees, trees are our, our rako, are our renewable resource. Is black iron sand renewable? Carl. White silica sand? Carl. Bauxite? Oil? Carl. So when we look at like it like that, I mean, you know, unless you've got a few million years to hang around for them to <laughs> to um, regenerate, we are using these resources up, and the only renewable resources resource is our arco, our trees. 
So non-renewable resources. Okay, and this is what I alluded to earlier. So what can we do? What can we do? We can look at our waste hierarchy. We can first refuse, say no to that stuff. So the first thing we need to do to be able to refuse things is to be aware of the stuff that we're using. Then we can reduce the stuff that we're using. We can reuse, um, and we've got wonderful repair cafes um, popping up all over the show. So um, learning to share our skills to repair. And um, like the previous speaker talked about was the um, right to repair movement. We can lobby legislators, our local governments, um, and go that is part of the top of that hierarchy as well. Um, repurpose things. Uh, obviously the rotting having um, compost and organic stuff so a really cool um, app or website that you can go to is share waste so if you don't have um, the ability to have a worm farm or a um, compost you can go to share waste and you can type in your address and people will log in and tell you that you can drop your compost off to them and um like the Richmond Community Gardens, a really great um, example of that. Uh, recycle, right. So recycle, like I was mentioning, is right down the bottom of that um, hierarchy. Recycling, absolutely. If we are using it, we want it to go back into a stream where it can be recycled again. It's really important to know um, about the whakapapa of recycling and knowing that that takes a lot of energy, um, carbon emissions, and it's a very big process to actually recycle something. And in fact, plastic, when um, people say they're recycling plastic, that's not actually what's happening. It's called downcycling. Um, we downcycle plastic because it can only really turn into like a plastic water bottle is not going to be able to make another plastic water bottle. It'll probably end up like those chippy packets and then eventually it is going to just end up in landfill. So plastic is something that is downcycled, not recycled. And then, of course, to dispose or to burn is just um, basically not honouring that Taonga that we've been given in the first place. We are just making Papa Tuanuku and Ranginui sick by giving her food that she can't digest. Papa Tuanuku can digest those natural products and turn them into beautiful nutrients and continue the cycle of life and health. When we put something into landfill or we burn it, it no longer um, is a source of health for um, Papa Tuanaku. Nga um, I've see, I'm seeing people popping back in, so I guess it's the transition oh, time. So um, are you able to pop in your website, socials or contacts in the chat yes. so folk can follow up? Absolutely. And sorry there wasn't time for um, questions, everybody, but, um, yeah, please get in touch with me um, if you want to continue the discussion.